Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're going to take a look at tools for cutting foam, the strengths and weaknesses of each, and which you might want to have for your builds. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. Insulation Foam, XPS Foam, Foam Core. Whatever form it comes in, foam is probably the most versatile and common supply for building dioramas, terrain, and scenery. It's light and cheap. It can be painted and sculpted. It takes glue very well because it's porous. It can do pretty much anything and this makes it the ideal raw material for miniature building. Except, it can be kind of hard to cut. Probably the number one question I get for model building is how do you cut foam? Now, here's the good news. It's actually very easy to cut foam, provided you have the right tools and materials. The bad news? Well, you need the right tools and materials. And this means that cutting foam accurately comes at a cost. But honestly, not much of one. Nevertheless, you do need to lay out some money to get the right tools for the job. At this point, we probably need to clarify what type of foam we're talking about. Mainly, I'm referring to insulation foam, like the pink, gray, or blue stuff that you get at the hardware store but this could also apply to foam core, sometimes called foam board. That's the piece of foam sandwiched between paper layers. You can usually get it at the dollar store or craft stores. Then there's a third option here too, styrofoam and other similar products with large granules in them, the sort of stuff used for packing electronics. This stuff can be used as filler in your builds because it's light. But, in my opinion, that's about the end of its uses. It doesn't sculpt, hold paint, or cut well. So steer clear of it, unless it's really, really specifically what you require for your needs. In this video, I'm going to go over the essential tools you'll need to become proficient at working with foam. I'll cover the strengths and weaknesses of each, so you can decide which tools are ideal to have in your collection. Let's take a look. Please support us by subscribing on Patreon. Our subscribers receive a 5% discount on paint and building supplies from Torchlight Games, promotional products from Event Horizon Hobbies, free access to 3D print files, and a whole lot more. If you wish to make a one-time donation, click the button for Super Thanks. Okay, if you don't have a craft knife, box cutter, or something similar, you're either brand new to the hobby, or you're watching the wrong video. This is the most simple and useful tool for the model builder. A knife can almost literally do anything. Cut odd shapes, get into tight corners, cut lines, even circles. Your craft knife is truly the most versatile option. But it's also not your best option for cutting foam. Why? Well, foam, whether it's foam core or insulation, is horrible on blades. It dulls them within a matter of a few cuts. Honestly, I really mean that. Just a few cuts. This will turn a brand new number 11 blade from a razor to a blunt instrument in no time. What this means is the blade goes from cutting to tearing real quick. And tearing when it comes to model building is bad. With insulation foam, the result will be wandering cuts and hairy edges. Insulation can be more forgiving because you can throw on a face mask, get some fine sandpaper, and fix the edge. But why suffer through this problem in the first place? 
The key then is to replace your blades constantly. Don't mess around. At the first sign that the blade is dull, just replace it. Your cuts will be better, and most importantly, it's safer to use the fresh edge. I know this might sound kind of counterintuitive, as a sharp sword is more dangerous than a dull one, but the real risk when cutting building materials is not where you intentionally direct the edge, but where it goes unexpectedly. A sharp blade will not stutter in a cut or slip on the surface, causing it to jump from your building material into your waiting fingers. Because you need to change so many blades, I buy my blades in bulk, usually in a pack of 100. I'll put an affiliate link in the video description to where I get mine. Or alternatively, you can go to your local craft or hobby shop and see if they can get you a deal on a large number of them. Lastly, in addition to a whole bunch of knife blades, I often recommend a mat cutter. This is a special device to cut foam board to make a mat to mount paintings or photos. It comes with a guide to make perfect edges, and it can bevel accurately, which can be pretty handy. Now, this will not work on insulation foam, but it's a great option if you find you work with a lot of foam core, and it's also not too pricey. It is, however, kind of hard to find in stores. I've put a link in the video description to where you can get it. But again, you may want to check your favorite art or hobby shop first. This is a bit of an oddball tool that you'll see from time to time. The hot foam knife is made up of a fairly stiff wire filament that protrudes from a handle. You plug it in, select a temperature, and cut with it, sort of like a really long flexible craft knife. Because it's basically just a handle, you can freehand cut angles and shapes into the foam, allowing you to get an approximation of the cut that you want. It basically just melts through the foam, giving you a smooth severed edge. Sounds great, right? Well, it has its uses, but this is not really a precision tool. If you want accurate cuts, you might get close but you'll still need to refine your work with a regular knife or sandpaper. Why is this? Well, the filament, at least on my knife, is both thick and flexible. This means its cuts are approximate only, as the filament wanders through the foam, as opposed to following a designated straight path. Sure, you can crank up the heat to counter this, but then the foam will continue to melt after you pass the blade through it causing your material to actually shrink. Fortunately, this tool isn't too expensive. Again, I've provided a link to it. I will warn you though, it's not my favorite. So I wouldn't make it my first purchase. What I would consider as my first purchase though, is this. Hot wire cutters are fairly common and they come in a number of brands. Woodland Scenics seems most common, but I've seen really nice homemade versions of these too. All this is, is a pair of prongs with a wire stretched between them that heats up when the device is plugged in or turned on. All you need to do to cut is to pass the wire through the foam. This gives a great option for foam insulation and packing foam but it's not really appropriate for foam core, as it won't cut through the paper layers. In terms of expense and utility, this is a very good option for any hobbyist. One thing to consider is the width of the prongs provides a limit on how large a cut you can make. Similarly, the wider the prongs, the harder it is to make precise cuts. Lastly, unlike the hot foam knife or craft knife, the wire needs to pass through the piece of foam, meaning the prongs have to be able to pass over or around the sides of the piece of foam you're cutting. If you're new to working with foam on your miniature, I suggest that this is your best option. Head over to your hobby shop to find this item. It's quite common and it's really hard to beat. If you can't find one easily, I've included a link in the video description.
Now we come to what is, in my opinion, the very best option for foam cutting. It's the hot wire table cutter. It's basically just like the other hot wire cutter, but instead of suspending the wire between prongs, it's strung between an arm and the surface of a cutting table. The table usually has a guide on it to help keep your cut straight. Most have variable temperature controls. Remember to set it to the minimum temperature you need to cut your foam material smoothly. Like the other hot wire cutters, this is not an option for foam core, but it'll work very well on the other foams. Interestingly, some of these machines also have the ability to cut circles and cone shapes. Though, I must admit, I would still find it a little hard. You can also use these to make extremely thin and fine cuts that you would have trouble with with your other foam cutting options. If you make a lot of shingles, like I do, the hot wire table cutter is absolutely essential. Most of the drawbacks with this machine should be obvious. These cutters are big. They require a dedicated space to put them, and they're more expensive than the other options. In terms of price point, however, there are a range of them, from bargain basement models to the Proxon, which is a high-end machine that does a sterling job. It's best if you're looking to invest in a hot wire table cutter that you do your research first, set your budget, and pick the one that will work best for you. So there you go, my guide to selecting the right tools for the job when it comes to cutting foam for your miniature building needs. There are of course other methods and items for the same purpose out there, and you may want to do more research for yourself on exactly what is the best solution for you. One thing is for sure though, once you add one of these cutters to your toolkit, you will have a huge set of new options to increase your model building skills. And broadening your opportunities as an artist is always a good thing. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, Remember to keep building life in miniature.